Does this game even matter? I don't know. You tell me. What? No, screw this game. What's up, Satana? Welcome back to a new episode of The Loft. I'm your favorite host, Natalia Paiva. I'm your favorite host, Alana Paiva, and we have a great episode for you guys today. And it's December. Hi, I am Ashley McCarty. My students know me as Frau McCarty, and I am the German teacher here at Centennial. I started learning German when I was in high school. I only took three years, and I actually, with those three years, completely tested out of taking any German in college. But um, then once I was there, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I was going to be a middle school teacher originally. And I ended up kind of changing my mind in a linguistics class and realizing that I liked learning how people learn languages more than anything else. So I thought, what if I were a German teacher? And I was like, that's crazy. I'm not a native speaker. I only took three years in high school. So I decided, well, let's just see. And so I got back into German, loved it. And then I went to the Middlebury Language Schools in Vermont for a summer. So they are famous for their language pledge. So for the entire seven weeks that I was there, I was not allowed to speak English at all for any reason. Um, and that's really where I learned uh, most of my German. And then I studied abroad in Regensburg, Germany. And then after I graduated college with a degree in German education, I got a Fulbright to go teach English and American studies in Austria. And so I did that for two years. And then I came back and I have been at Centennial ever since. So living in a new country um, that is not your home is a big deal. Um, I think anybody who's had that experience, people who live here, that that is their experience, or people um, who were born and raised here who've had that all have something in common. Um, and it kind of expands your soul, it expands your perspective. Um, and living in Austria was seriously one of the best times of my life. Up until this point, um, I lived in the Alps. I would work in the morning, I would go skiing in the afternoon, and then I could see my friends in the evening. And I had very few work hours, very few responsibilities, and I got to have friends from all over the place and speak so much German. It was great. The hardest thing about where I lived, though, was that they spoke a dialect that I was not familiar with. So it wasn't just German I was practicing, I was also having to adapt to the local dialect. My favorite thing about being a language teacher is that we get to teach a lot of culture and it's one of the few subjects that you can use to travel. Um, and it's very fun for me to see my former students in the German speaking world, either for an internship that they've gotten only because they spoke German or they're living in a German speaking country and they'll take pictures of things that we talked about in class and send it back to me. So that's really fun is to be able to see the impact it's had on people's lives, whether it's through an exchange while they're still here or later in their life. Um, but also everything can be part of our curriculum as a language teacher, which is nice. My favorite thing about language in general is that it's unexpected. So a lot of people think that German is really harsh sounding and um, kind of just like mean sounding, but actually the more you learn German, the more adorable it is. There's so many German words that are compound words that are hilarious, like the word for thimble is finger hat. Uh, in German it's fingerhut, but it translates to finger hat, and that's just hilarious and adorable. And there are so many examples like that, and so I just love that. <laughs> and you, I watch you that. are watching you. a lot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miss Wingate, and your word of the week is vamoose, which means to exit or to part quickly. So, how have your holidays been so far? Well, it started off a little rough. My Christmas tree fell on me. Oh. But after that, it's just been, I've been getting back on my feet, you know, I got out of the hospital. How have you been? Uh, I've been pretty good. Uh, hold on, I think he's trying to talk to me. Yeah, what's up?
I guess he had the vamoose. My name is Ms. Schwarzenfeld. I am an Algebra 1 teacher. So when I was, I actually graduated from Centennial High School in 2013. Um, and when I was a student here, I was a peer facilitator. And um, it just really inspired me to, you know, want to work with people with disabilities. And so, um, you know, my goal was to eventually, obviously, graduate high school, go to college, get my degree, and then come back and actually teach here. So. Um, and I, I guess I succeeded that goal because here I am. <laughs> so I think initially my inspiration were some of those CBI students, um, but a lot of it had to do with my parents. They were huge inspirations for me, just you know, wanting me to do whatever I wanted. Um, really pushed for me to, um, you know, be successful, but also find something that I was passionate about. Um, and then when I started teaching, there was a specific student that I worked with at my school before this that just truly, you know, really emphasized that passion for teaching. So I actually am watching The Watcher right now. Um, it's very interesting. I'm only three episodes in, so I'm still binging it, but I've watched, I watched both episodes yesterday. So I started yesterday after work, so, um, but it's, it's very interesting so far. Gosh, I am grateful definitely for my parents, my family. Um, my cat, she was my COVID cat and got me through all of that weird time by yourself. So my cat is the best thing ever. I'm grateful for some of my friends, grateful for my wonderful coworkers. Um, the administration here has been wonderful. So I'm really grateful for, you know, how they've really built the morale around the building this year. Um, I am grateful for all my students. They just bring, you know, they just make me happy and cheery all the time. And, um, you know, helped me learn a lot about the world that I didn't know about. So it's very, I love learning about all of that and I'm grateful for that. Hey seniors, class of 2023, I'm Sammy. And I'm Emily. Are you interested in getting a Chick-fil-A sandwich personally delivered to you? It's hot and ready for you guys. And in order to enter this raffle, you must pay your senior dues by December 9th. All you have to do is go on the Centennial um, page and go to the senior section and apply today. Don't forget to do it. Go seniors. Walk in the streets with you and your one object. I cannot think this is how it ought to be. Laughing on the this is Jordan G with another man on the street. Yeah. What's your favorite Barbie movie? Oh, oh. Oh, oh, the one where they go to the beach. The mermaid one. No, no. <laughs> have you heard of Barbies, like the Barbie dolls? Yes, I have. Did you ever watch any Barbie movie? Um, I don't think so. Oh. Castle. Swan oh, Lake. Princess Charm School. 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 Princess Charm School goes crazy. Oh, yeah. Like, Princess School. Oh, yes. the, the Princess Charm School? Yes. Yeah. And the Donda. Would you try carbonated coffee? Yes. No. What do you think it would taste like? I think it would taste like Coke, but like on fire. Oh, that's disgusting. I think it would taste good, like uh, butterscotch lollipop. For a boy or a girl for a day, what would you do? <laughs> um, I would, I would, I would snap all the girls. If you were a boy for a day, what would you do? <laughs> 
<laughs> if I was a guy for a day, a <laughs> if I was a girl for a day, uh, I probably would like go out because like I feel like boys can do whatever they want, really. Like, oh, I would go pee, <laughs> standing up. Yeah, I play could. basketball. Um, I would um, hang out with me, like a girl, like the girl. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, do you guys think pumpkin spice is overrated? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Absolutely. Why do you say that? It's just kind of gross. <laughs> it depends, because like it could be hitting hard in the fall, but like in the summer. Definitely. It's nasty. I love pumpkin spice. Good, like, I don't think it's on the top. My favorite is the shamrock shake at McDonald's. <laughs> Last one. Smell super califragic expialidocious. S U P E R. S U P E R C A C I. G A R A G I. I'm, I'm lost. S U P E R C A G D L M F A O N O Q. I'll go again. I'll try again. Super califragilistic S P L I D O C I O U S. S U P E R C A L I F R S T I C E S. S U P Q A G. That was correct. And this has been your man on the street with Jordan G. Harry Chapstick. <laughs> what are you at? <laughs> Hello, everybody. A lot of people have been telling me recently about this World Cup thing that's going on, and I don't personally get it. I don't understand why all the countries in the world are coming together to kick balls for just some dingy little cup. But you see, I'm an open-minded person, so I want to see things from both sides of the argument. And uh, the only way to truly understand why everyone really wants this cup is by seeing it for myself. So, what I did was, I stole it. And now, a lot of people might say, Kai, that's grand larceny. But to that I say, no, it's a slam dunk. But yeah, um, now that I have it, my opinions haven't really changed. It's, uh, it's kind of gross. It's got like some fungal growths inside. I don't know if you can see in there. But um, it's also got a mysterious white stain. Um, God only knows where that came from. Uh, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't get why people are working really hard to get this thing. But you know what? They're working hard. They're, they're striving to this goal. You know, it gives them something to work towards. So I, I respect it. Um, but the winners will have to come get it from me because I'm not flying back to Qatar. Other than that, I don't really see any uh, uses for this. I'm definitely not drinking out of it. I'm really into golf. I like golf. So maybe um, I can like bury this in the ground and it could be like the little hole I tried to get the golf club into, you know? Tip a, tip a bird to a stick, you know, hit it, maybe get a home run. Uh, and if I'm lucky, maybe it'll shoot a hoop. And that is what we call a birdie. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. I'm Dr. Lindsay Swanson Treefer. I'm a sports psychologist here in the Marietta, Atlanta area. I initially wanted to be a dolphin trainer. Clearly that did not really work out. Um, and when I was playing softball in college, I started to notice a little bit more of the mental aspects of things. Um, I had a college roommate who got the yips, which if you don't know what those are, um, that means that all of a sudden, what used to feel very normal, like throwing, kind of disappeared. And the more that I got into psychology, uh, the more that I saw the connections of, of really needing to develop those mental skills. Because I wanted to be a dolphin trainer, uh, my options were either going a psychology route, marine biology route, and I decided that I did not want to do marine biology. I was like, I'll go psychology, we'll go that route. And then as I got further into it, that's where I started to make that kind of connection. So from my undergrad in psychology, I went and got a master's in counseling um, at Georgia State. And after spending my two years there, I spent a year doing a little bit of research uh, on the side and working at um, an inpatient hospital, which was really actually very helpful because it gave me exposure to a wider array of groups than I would have ever had access to. For me, owning my own business and kind of being able to, to run my own show is, is something also that for me kind of I guess would be um, an accomplishment in that sense. But I've been really proud of the things that I've been able to develop and really kind of push and grow uh, sports psychology, particularly within this, this area and hopefully 
in the future expanding out into more and more things. Um, but I think it's become, I'm glad that we're trying to make it more of a, a normal thing. I think my biggest piece of advice is actually spending the time and energy to develop that. Now you can do that in a lot of different ways, whether that's working with me, whether that's you know connecting with teammates, whether that's just having conversations and actually doing your own reading books um, and kind of diving into that. But actually taking that part just as seriously as you do the amount of time you spend on the court and on the field, that's great. But most often when I ask an athlete, like what is it that you think caused this outcome to happen? It's almost never that they were, you know, they weren't physically prepared or that they didn't have the technical skills. It's always, I got distracted. I was focusing over here on this. I was too nervous. I didn't handle the pressure. Like, I clearly don't play softball anymore. It's not my swing that works well for me in the business. It's all of the other things of how you communicate, of how you deal with when things go sideways. How do you make adjustments? How do you fail? How do you recover? Um, how do you manage all of the emotions that come up in life, whether that's, you know, relationships or with family or in business. And so making sure that you're spending enough time there and not just hoping that you're going to get it along the way. Oh my God, look at the little Ensimiata. Isn't it so cute? This is a 2009 Subaru Forester that hit it. This one's just like every other car. It's an NPC car with a red paint job to make itself feel special like a recently divorced dad who's learning how to talk to people again. It pushes 170 horsepower through a boxer four propelling this thing. It sounds like your dad is sneezing while he hands you cough drops. This is a partial zero emissions vehicle, which is California's compromise with Subaru to ruin everything. Accelerating this four speed automatic feels like shoving your hands into a bowl of jello. Nothing really happens and you wonder why you did it. Everyone else is now looking and they are wondering why too. This car's competitor was the Toyota RAV4 and obviously if you look around the RAV4 won, giving this car Pepsi status while most people prefer Coke. Like it's okay, but nothing really to write home about. This thing came with a panoramic sunroof making this a great pitch to anyone who uses stickers to explain their worldly travels when their adventures they claim usually boil down to a curb at a midwestern walmart in the base of a mountain this is a 2009 car meaning it's a mid-recession purchase its resale value declined slowly just like most marriages from this time period as well you kind of just end up with this car you don't know why and you can't complain because there's nothing wrong with it this is how the owner feels about the car I don't have an emotional attachment to this vehicle. The interior plastics feel about as fragile as the ego of someone who over explains how they don't have a fragile ego. Stop! I'm not like that! I'm not like that! I don't have a fragile ego! Uh, yeah, the trunk. Uh, it works. You know, it, it does its job. The doors sound like they're made of Mountain Dew cans, but make a reassuring clunk when you close them. Yeah, that sounds legit. The sound system's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's like old-fashioned vanilla ice cream. I mean, it's good, but it's only because you couldn't afford Ben and Jerry's. Ah, oh, yes, closing. Uh, 5.7 out of 10. Um, I'd recommend this to anyone without a choice. If you want a car to be reviewed, just approach me in the hallway in the most annoying pick-me way, and maybe I'll do it. Till next time, this has been Zach's Car Reviews, and I'll see y'all. Every Subaru is boring. They're just like a Up next, the best CSPN ever made. What's up, Centennial? Welcome back to CSPN. I'm your host, Grayson Strumpus and Luke Stevens. Last Tuesday, our girls' flag football team defeated Shiloh in the first playoff game, winning 12 to 6. Also, last Tuesday, our boys' varsity basketball team had a huge win against Parkview High School, winning 58 to 57. Carter Witt with the game winning shot. And this Saturday, our girls' and boys' varsity basketball teams take on Latmar Christian in our first home game. The girls' game starts at 1 and the boys start at 2 30. Hope to see everyone there. Go Knights! And that's it for this week's Centennial. Hope you enjoyed, as always, and we'll see you next episode. Go Knights! And it's December, guys, and we have a great episode for you. <laughs> I'm your favorite host, Elena Paiva, and we have a great episode for you guys today. And, and it's December. Stop saying it after. What? And. Can I see? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. <laughs>
<laughs> and we have a great episode for you guys today. And it's December! <laughs> Always, and we'll see you next episode. Go Knights! Me enredé con la torta, que raro. Good morning, Centennial. We're back <laughs> to another episode of The Love. Why? I, I, I'm bored. I'm confused. Fuck, I'm back. Do you remember how to do this? No, bro. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Actually, oh, wait, no. You. No, why should it not? Mm. You, like, really know that. That actually will be, like, a really funny segment. Yeah.